Joining us now to talk about that is Adam uh, Singolda. He's the CEO of Taboola. Last week, his company announced it's experimenting with integrating ChatGTP into its ad platform. Good morning to you. And we've been talking about how this type of technology, the first places we may see it meaningfully, perhaps even more than, 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 the, than folks writing memos with it, is actually in very personalized advertising. How personalized do you think it can become? I think we can't hear you, unfortunately. That's something that uh, the AI bots can't help us with, uh, but maybe uh, the producers can. Adam? Is it okay now? It's okay now. All right, so I was, I was about to say, good time to be alive, you know, so much innovation outside of my Zoom. But so, you know, I think taking a step back, you know, for advertisers and the advertising community, this is such a good opportunity between all the money that's going to go into GPT between Microsoft and Google. We saw the recent announcements, Taboola last week. I think, you know, we should expect a lot of innovation around creative strategies. You know, imagine having the Michael Jordan of creative uh, strategies sitting on your shoulder and telling you these are suggested titles you should use, images. This has been working in the past. So I suspect we'll see a lot of uh, innovation coming uh, our way. And specifically with search, you know, what's interesting is kudos to Microsoft, you know, for jumping on this so fast. I think, you know, for them, the opportunity is to kind of reimagine search as, you know, the main, you know, uh, advertising channel in the world. You know, search is almost a $200 billion a year advertising channel. So that's great for them to kind of try to reimagine that for Google. It's interesting because they have sort of the triple dilemma. You know, on the one side, the, the main revenue stream is search, and that can cannibalize them. So that's, that's, a, that's a risk. The second thing is Google is responsible for sending 30 to 50% of the traffic to the internet. What happens if ChatGPT says, here's the answer, and now you go nowhere? And thirdly, well, Google still has to deal with TikTok right. and all of that challenges. So there's just so much going on. Well, Adam, let me ask you about that. So the, right, the promise of ChatGPT is that instead of you doing the searching, if you will, that it's, it's actually providing you with the answer, not five answers or 10 answers, or if you scroll through all the pages and decide you're gonna, right? Right. The question is whether you think that the public actually wants that. And the reason I ask is, um, unfortunately, uh, you know, we have debates about truth and fact and misinformation and good information and all of that. And whether we, the public, have all become our own reporters and are, are looking, in some cases, for our own truths. And whether if we're looking up a, a medical issue or something or, or, or anything, we actually want to go not just to one site that tells us the, the quote answer, but we want to go to five sites that tell us the five different potential answers. It's a great question. I think there's also a lot of dilemmas in that, too. On the one side, I don't think, you know, um, search as we know it now will completely go away or go away at all, because I, I do believe people like choice. They like to go through options. They want to see this is from CNBC. This is from The New York Times. This is from a blog I like and make those decisions. People like to have choice. So I think that's the power of search. On the flip side of it, you know, it's very valuable to cut 10 minutes into 30 seconds and get the result. And by the way, we've been seeing Google, you know, experimenting with that for a long time. In many ways, it's not new. If you ask a very simple question, Google, Google will give you the answer at the top. So my, you know, my guess is that we'll see a whole new service that sits side by right. side to search. Right. But there is, a, there is a question here about how are publishers being rewarded for all of this information. So if you're taking that information from the open web and publishers, how do you reward them?